Why does the breaker keep tripping for the air conditioner? The air conditioner is cooling, but the breaker is tripping. So what should you check and what do you need to know? You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Got a call, upstairs unit, outside breakers tripping. The first thing I do is take the cover off of the box, look inside. I wanna see if I can see any corrosion. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that breaker out and we're gonna actually look at the bars in the box and then we're gonna take and flip that breaker off and back on while it's isolated and outside just to see if we can see any abnormalities. So it's a 50 amp breaker, looks like it's number six wire, so number six wire will handle 60 amps. Now I'm gonna come over to the data plate for the outdoor unit and you can see that the max circuit breaker size should be 60 or max fuse max overcurrent protection should be a 60 so it should be a 60 amp breaker and we need to make sure we replace this breaker before we leave to a 60 but we have to make sure that the wire will carry it and we do have number six wire so it will carry 60 amps we also need to check the breaker inside then we look at this minimum circuit ampacity 34.7 amps so while the unit's running we should be a little bit less than 34 amps while the unit's running. So we're gonna measure the amp draw first to see if I see if it's pulling more than what that breaker's rated for. Now I'm gonna measure the amp draw of the wire coming from the breaker going to the unit. I'm using the Fluke 393 FC. I actually just got this. This thing is the bomb. Look at how narrow the clamp is. It's easier to fit it in tight spaces. Look at this. Boop. What's it pulling? 28 amps so it's below 34.7 so this breaker should not be tripping what can cause a breaker to trip well a loose connection can it will cause heat to build up so a loose connection will cause heat and that'll cause a breaker to trip uh, we could have a bad capacitor and that could be causing the motor to pull more amps on startup it could be dirty it could be a bad motor so we may need to check the amp draw on the motors, make sure that they're good. But what I'm gonna do now, since I know it's not pulling more than 50 amps, is I'm actually gonna shut the breaker off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this breaker out like this, and the breaker is hot. Oh my goodness, it's so hot. All right, I'm gonna get my uh, thermal imaging camera and we're gonna read the temperature of that breaker because it's super hot. So we may have a loose connection or a bad breaker. Now we're gonna use a thermal imaging camera. Ooh, looks like it's red. And what does it say on that thermal imaging camera? 168 degrees. Looks like it's really hot right there in the middle of that breaker. And now I'm gonna use a little temp gun here. Looks like 131 is what I'm seeing. So 131, this is measuring about 160. That is not good. So let's take this breaker out. We're gonna have to use gloves for sure. Make sure you have a good set of gloves. I'm gonna take and loosen up these wires. Looks like they were both pretty tight. So that wasn't the problem. And if you look at the back of the breaker, it looks like they look good. They're not corroded. Uh, they're not discolored and then if you look inside you look at the bars now they're still hot so be careful but if you look at both bars there's no corrosion it's not discolored now let's take a look right here and let's see is this tight is this tight yep it's tight is there a ground wire there is a ground wire is it tight everything looks tight so I think we just had a bad breaker but we'll take this breaker apart and take a look inside this breaker, it just fell right apart. You can see inside, not on this side, but on this side, see how the wire is becoming discolored right here? And this is the part that's actually pretty hot too. I don't really see any problems, but it fell right apart, it was so hot. So you can see how this heat can damage that breaker easily. Now that I've got the new 60 amp double pole breaker installed, I'm going to turn the breaker on, but before I do that, I'm going to check the capacitor. So I come over here, 
and I look for a capacitor and there is no capacitor because this is a YHM model York and it's variable capacity. So it's got an inverter board. So we should have soft start capability. We shouldn't even pull a lot of amps on startup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the wires coming in. Look like they are uh, wire nutted. Make sure they're nice and tight. Looks like they are. I'm gonna go ahead and put my clamp around one of these right here like this and then I'm going to turn my meter to amps and then I'm going to push the inrush button I'm going to check the inrush current and it looks like we got a breaker up here too so let's go ahead and turn the breaker on let's do that now looks like 9.8 amps is what we've got 9.8 amps or 27 at peak fans on I can hear the compressor running I'm gonna go ahead and turn my fluke meter off and then I'm gonna turn it back on and we're reading 10 amps right now because it's just starting up but it's gonna ramp up 11 12 13 we're checking the charge as well. All right, I'm just gonna let this set and let it run for a minute. Unit's been running about 15 minutes. Amp draw is 28. I'm also gonna check the voltage. So nothing has changed there. Low side pressure is 150. High side pressure is 350. This is 410A. Those pressures look pretty good. It's about 90 degrees outside. 55 degree suction line temperature, wow. So if we look at 55 and 52, three degrees of superheat, wow. All right, let's check the subcooling. Okay, so we checked the suction line temperature. Now we're checking the liquid line temperature. It is 93. And we've got saturation over here is about 105. So 105 and 93. Looks like we've got about 12 degrees of subcooling, so I'd say the system is charged. Now you always need to check airflow, make sure you have good feet per minute on all the vents, the return, and then check the supply air and the return air temperature. Check the temperature difference. Now I'm gonna take the cover off the box and we're gonna check the temperature of that breaker again and compare it to that other one. That unit just shut off, so let's see what it looks like. Let's check out this breaker. It's about 103, and that's from the front. Looks like it's getting hot. Check out this other one. 95, it just shut off, but... Whew. Both systems are running. I've actually found out what the issue is, and I'm gonna tell you what it is right after I show you what the temperature is of the breaker. 147 degrees, the unit hasn't been running 15 minutes, and it's already super hot. This one, 94 degrees so the problem is is that this is a square d box and this is a square d box and somebody put a siemens breaker in this box now i had this breaker with me so i just threw it in there but after installing now i realize wow i just did the same thing that the other person did and this breaker would have fried if i would have left it but i looked at the tag and i said this is a square d box and then I had this example over here. Now, if you look at the bars, you can see they are inside that breaker all the way, right? And then if you look at these bars, you can see they're not pushed in there all the way. Hopefully you can tell the difference. But this is not the listed breaker for this box. So this is a good example right here of, you should use the right breaker for the right box. Don't use unlisted breakers now I've got the right breaker this is the breaker I had in my truck thankfully I looked at the box before I left and checked with the thermal imaging camera this is a home line series square D breaker and I'm going to show you the back see if you can see if there's any difference in the little connector points here that connect into the bus bar let me know if you can see any difference in the comments this is a UL listed breaker and if you don't use the right breaker, one that's listed for the box, then you're gonna fail an electrical inspection. I've failed electrical inspections 
for not using, I used a breaker that worked, but because it wasn't listed for the box, the electrical inspector failed me and I had to go buy the right breaker. So not only can you have damage to breakers or boxes from not using the right breaker, but you can fail an inspection. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this, and then we're gonna turn the unit back on, and I am going to check and see if there is a high temperature reading. So I'm gonna get this breaker installed. All right. Let's uh, make sure it's off and push this. You see how that goes all the way in? Look at that. See, that's all the way in. That square, that uh, Siemens breaker, those bars would not push all the way in those jaws. So automatically I can see a difference and I can see why that breaker was getting so hot. I guarantee once we start this up, once we turn it on and get the unit running and pulling some amps through here, it's not gonna be getting hot. Everything is tight. Make sure I try to pull those wires out. I can't pull them out. All right, back on. Now, we're gonna get the unit running, let it run for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna use the thermal imaging camera and we're gonna recheck the temperature of that breaker. Unit is running. Now let's check and see if the breaker's hot. Looks like it's 88 degrees. It's not getting hot. Now we have the right breaker. Now we're gonna do a voltage check. So voltage, just to see 245 volts. So we got good voltage, that's good. Whenever I put that Siemens breaker in, whenever I put the cover on around the breaker, I knew the breaker was wrong because the cover should fit nicely around the breaker. Look at this breaker and look at how the cover fits nicely around it. And then when I saw that that cover wasn't fitting around it, I looked up here and I saw it says D, square D, home line load center. So I knew I got to go to the supply house and I got to get the right breaker. So take a look at the way the cover goes on as well to tell you whether or not you're using the right breaker and also sometimes you can see on here it'll say what type of box it is whether it's square d whether it's siemens you'll be able to tell then you'll be able to know let's talk about what you should check if your breaker trips when your unit comes on and then when you turn it back on it trips immediately if you have this issue with a breaker tripping right off the bat when your unit comes on or just tripping and then you turn it back on, could be a bad breaker, but you also need to check your compressor windings. You need to check and see if there's a wire touching for your compressor in the outdoor unit section. Or there could be a crankcase heater if it's a heat pump, and I've had crankcase heaters, the wires touching or the crankcase heater touching the shell, and that was causing the short. You may need to isolate the wires of the compressor and then turn the breaker back on. And then if the breaker doesn't trip, then use your meter and check the windings. If you don't know how to use your meter and check the windings of the compressor, I'll put a video down below so you can learn more. So go check out that video if you need to learn more. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience as a technician in the field to help you be a better technician. If you learned something in today's video, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, questions can lead to new content. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me. Questions I have after leaving the job. How long was that breaker in that box? And how did it last that long if it was in there for several years? Let me know what you think.